welcome back friends in this video we will be talking about uh, the introductory video of uh, those antibiotics which usually block the 50s ribosome of bacteria and thus blocking the protein synthesis of uh, bacteria right so it is blocking the 50s ribosome 50s ribosome inhibitor so we'll be talking about 50s ribosome inhibitor okay now the example for that uh, the class name is termed as macrolides so macrolides is the example of the class and among these macrolides there are examples so let me talk about the examples so the examples are so change the color examples are azithromycin azithro mycin then we are having clarithromycin clarithromycin and erythromycin erythromycin so these are the examples and you can see that there is a sin or mycin at the end that that is the characteristic or uh, how to memorize the name of this antibiotics anyways okay now the property of these macrolides antibiotics are that uh, they are uh, they can be absorbed orally. So oral absorption is a kind of rapid. So let me write. So they are a kind of rapid oral action, oral absorption, absorption. Okay, and especially these two, clarithromycin and erythromycin, they are having a very rapid oral absorption, uh, but they are a kind of uh, acid sensitive right so they can be degraded inside our gi tract so they are so let me write they are acid sensitive sensitive so if we need them to be uh, in if we need them to be uh, taken via the oral route in those case we need to coat them in such a way so that they can survive the gastric acid right so they are usually used as enteric coated tablet so we use them as so let me write it here enteric coated tablet okay that's the reason that the reason is that they are acid sensitive that's why we need to take them as enteric coated tablet to survive the gastric juice anyways now they majorly go against gram positive bacteria that's all that's all they are active against gram positive bacteria so let me write against gram positive bacteria and the examples of gram positive bacteria in this case staphylococcus streptococcus so let me write staphylococcus or staph streptococcus or strep and uh, sometimes they can also go against legionella and mycoplasma infections so legionella as well as mycoplasma infections okay otherwise they are majorly used for gram positive infections Okay, now the therapeutic use for them that we can vastly use them for streptococcus and staphylococcal infection. So let me write streptococcus staphylococcal infection. Strep staph infections. Okay, we can use them in strep staph infections. And also we can use them in, in influenza, in Lyme disease. So we can use them in Lyme disease treatment. And, and also we can use them in syphilis remember syphilis okay and it should be one li anyways uh, and we can also use them in some std so let me talk about we can also use them in some std like gonorrhea gonorrhea okay now in this case we can see this gonorrhea is a gram negative so some gram negative bacteria an example is gonorrhea for that Example is Nizeria gonorrhea for that. Okay. Otherwise, majorly used against gram positive. We can use them against uh, chlamydia, legionella infections, uh, mycoplasma infections. We can take them uh, against what we know as tetanus. So we can take them against tetanus. So it's a very vast number of different diseases we can treat using. This macrolides type of antibiotics. We can use them against tetanus. So let me write tetanus, pertussis, pertussis, diphtheria. 
diphtheria and so on so there are many more infections that we can treat using these macrolides but one thing I should tell you that macrolides are 50s ribosome inhibitors and they are not going to kill the bacteria so what they can do they are a kind of bacteriostatic bacteriostatic that means they can go and stop or halt the growth of the bacteria but they will not kill the bacteria so that's one disadvantage you can say that if the infection is thriving very rapidly and we want the bacteria to to be killed we cannot use macrolides in those cases right if any kind of infections which are not causing that much of harm if we simply uh, slow down the growth of bacteria or, or normal immune system can take uh, the situation and hold on to it and can cure us if those infections set place in our body in those cases only we can take macrolides or macrolides or any kind of bacteriostatic antibiotics otherwise if we need to rapidly eliminate those bacteria from our body we shouldn't use macrolides we must use some kind of bactericidal or bacterial killing antibiotics okay now uh, another advantage you can say for this kind of uh, macrolides antibiotic is that they are having very few side effects and very milder milder side effects and the side effects are like nausea vomiting so let me write nausea it's a very very common nausea and vomiting nausea and vomiting these are very common side effects you can see many antibiotics showing this kind of side effects and diarrhea sometimes sometimes diarrhea and in very few cases in very few cases it can cause jaundice very few cases this is very very rare but still it can cause jaundice and sometimes it can be result as hepatoxicity hepatoxic it's again rare otherwise usually the symptoms are milder symptoms like nausea vomiting diarrhea they are very common if you take a lot of antibiotic in a certain amount of time okay so that's uh, in a sense the introductory video about the macrolides and i hope that's helpful thank you